Hello and welcome to a very surprising episode and I've had the visit of Stella Tennant, um, aka Mary and Queen of Scots. It's um, kind of surprising. <laughs> As she popped in about two days ago. Um, two days ago she, she appeared and she she told me she was also Mary, Queen of Scots. And um, from other channelers, I had heard that usually people who, people, um, usually souls who incarnate as royalty usually come back uh, more or less in the same roles. And she's saying, um, yes, same roles. She says, we're sort of good at it. We kind of got the hang of it, so we know how to be a royal. Although in this life, she says, I wasn't very much of an active royal. I was more of a fashion diva, fashion queen. But um, she, I know there's a, a lot of people who are talking about that it was a suspicious death, and she's not really answering that question. She says, um, she doesn't really want to talk about that lifetime. She says it's not that important of a lifetime compared to the one that she had as Mary of Queen of Scots. And she sort of wants to clear her name. She says it's really funny how we, when we look to the past, she says when we look to the past, and we look at our ancestors, we, we like to think of them as dumb. It makes us feel better. And um, she she was very quick in her, she showed me a lot of things so that I could understand the story um, because her, her story is very connected to that of Queen Elizabeth I. And um, she wants to explain sort of the mystery behind her. And she says there's a reason why it's a mystery because people haven't still figured out what my role was and i think they're it's a classic thing to pit two women against each other as the bad guys and she's saying i want to clear that she says i, I want to keep a bit of mystery i don't want to say it all at the beginning so you so you, she wants to give you the clues like she gave them to me. So the first clue she says is, um, it's the queen herself. She says it's a. Uh, she says I when I met her, um, she's saying they were both quite young, and you have to understand this is yes, it was a savage time and people didn't know how to write or read. But people were still very smart. And when you would meet Elizabeth, she says there was an aura about her. And when I met her, I knew instantly that she was the rightful person to rule the land. I had no doubts about that, she says. It was just something in her. And now she wants to talk about contracts. So she says there was a contract there were a bunch of souls to come in to help England develop. And they had a very strict mission. And she says it's kind of like those spy movies. There was darkness um, at the time on Earth. And they were trying to prevent this mission. They were trying to prevent the rise of England. And whether it would have been a male king or a female king, it, it wouldn't matter. And she says, I said that purposefully. It, it didn't matter who would be on the throne. They were trying to ruin the mission. And we were like a bunch of spies in a spy movie. She's making me, refer, refer, referring me to Atomic Blonde. And... When I met her, I knew there was something inside of me that lit up. And 
instantly I, I knew I had to protect her. I had to be on her side. And there were already several attempts on her life as a, as a young woman, a young child, a young um, teenager. And all the people who were close to her were contracted on the other side to help her to stay the queen because she needed to, to do the role. She needed to fulfill that role as a queen because she was guided by messages from the other side. She, she was very much in tune. She was sort of a messianic figure. And when you met her, you would feel that it was just undeniable. She just, she was a wee woman, she says. She was tiny. But there was something about her that was just huge. You know, like she, it was fitting almost that she had this small body because it emphasized even more the fact that she was, she was otherworldly from the beginning. And she made a great sacrifice as a human being. She, a lot of movies hint at that, she says, at the sacrifice that she had to make to become the queen. And, but I had to make a sacrifice as well. And I was a very beautiful woman in that lifetime. Very beautiful. And we knew it would be advantageous to me to be a sort of double agent because they knew they would try and use any person that would be close enough to the throne to dethrone her. And they knew they would come to me because it was just, I was a Catholic and I was God-fearing and she was God-fearing, but they didn't want me to know that. Elizabeth was profoundly connected to the Mother Mary energy, she says. She was, she was really guided by divine forces. And we were all guided by divine forces into this game of spies. So I was going to be a double agent. She smiles. <laughs> she says, that's pretty dramatic, right? So I, wasn't, I was not the betrayer that people thought I was. I was working for the queen. And you have to imagine back then, she had a lot of people that worked for her and that she could trust. And those people had come in with a sole contract to, to play this role, that the biggest spy game ever. And she's showing me the portrait, the rainbow portrait. So I'm just going to take a break and we'll be right back. I'll show you the rainbow portrait. She wants to explain this portrait. It's funny, she says, how many people have seen it and they still think that it was a rainbow there in her hands. She's saying, wow, you guys. <laughs> I don't know, she says, she says it's purposefully masked. The, the stories that they feed you are purposefully masked so that you don't realize how amazing this woman was and how amazing we will we all were in in keeping her at the throne for the mission to be fulfilled for England to become what it became on so many levels you have no idea how important it was and we all sacrificed and she again she's saying we love our country we do She's pointing to the eyes and the mouths and the ears on the dress. And yes, there's a symbolism about sort of the spy network that was there. But the real meaning of those eyes and ears and mouths is that it was a symbolism of people who wanted to get rid of her. And she was wearing that dress as a symbol of overcoming these people. And in fact, what seems to be a hose, and it couldn't be painted as a serpent, but there is a serpent on her arm, she says. And the serpent has two meanings. Of course, it has the meaning of 
knowledge, but it also has the meaning of betrayal. So there's one serpent on her arm that represents the knowledge and the power, the kundalini energy. And then the one that she's holding is sort of a ghost of a snake and the head is missing. And it's a sort of symbolism about how she defeated the snakes. So she's saying <laughs> the, the double meaning also of the Latin uh, inscription She's saying iris means rainbow, but it also means eye, the iris of the eye. And I think people, there's a, she's saying it's kind of evident because the modern meaning of iris is eye. So basically the, the, the inscription says there is no sun without eyes. So therefore, if you cannot see the light, there is no sun <laughs> or rainbow. So she's, in effect, sending so many different messages. So it's easy to misconstrue the message. The deep message is that she killed the snake and England became great and she fulfilled her mission. She's making me feel it was not her favorite portrait to have made. And now she's referring me to two other portraits. This is very informative. She's she's very detached. She says, I don't want to talk about feelings or things like that. She says, I want to talk about facts so people can do the research. So she's referring to the, the Armada portrait and her first portrait, the coronation portrait. And she says she wants people to realize if they can look at her own painting of her, how demurely she's dressed as a lady and how pretty much every lady, even a queen, that is painted. She's referring me to the portrait of the Queen of Denmark, which was painted similarly around the same time. She says, you'll remark that no woman would ever wear so many jewels and so many furs. And even the costume that she wears refers to her father, Henry. And she was a very androgynous being. She says she was, she liked to play with the idea of being a king. And she would, at every occasion, try to dress as much as a man as she could, she says. She was quite cheeky in that. And she always referred back to her father. And she always tried to model herself after her father. He was a great source of inspiration for her. If you can look at all the portraits again, You'll see it's a very masculine way of dressing and feminine at the same time, androgynous, sort of mixing that kind of ornamentation and that kind of over jeweled and over furred and the big shoulders. That was a very masculine way of dressing. And it's funny how no one mentions it in any of the accounts about Her Highness, she says, because it's quite important in the persona and they miss that in the movies they always portray her as a beautiful woman but in fact she was the most androgynous person you could have met at the time and she played really well with her image she was the perfect actress we were great actresses she says she's smiling she says we were we fooled them all we made them believe that we hated each other i went to france to spy she says, and I would send through a very complex system of people that were all trustworthy information back to her on the court because everyone was plotting her demise. Everyone. You can't imagine what it meant to be a woman back then and have that power and not be of the church. She says, you have no idea how they hated her and how they wanted to destroy her. And I pretended so well that I had to make my own sacrifices. She's saying the death of her husband and the death of a child, because they really believed that she was against her. And so they, it was a great loss for her, she says. And she's referring me also to her death. She says that's why the queen 
was really heartbroken because here was someone who was helping her all this time and who played her role. I played my role so well that we had to play it out till the end, she says. It had to be. We couldn't leave any doubts and I knew that I would have to die in sacrifice for my country. And she's saying, I'm very proud of that. I'm very, very proud. And that I played my role so well that I have you fooled even now and can't even see through the lies and the deceptions. Because there were so many back then, you have no idea what we were fighting against. You have no idea. She says, right now, we are fighting against the darkness, but it was nothing like it was back then. She says it was nothing. And she wants people to know that these kinds of sacrifices are not as big today, but we will have to be making sacrifices to keep our countries great, to keep things as they should be. She's saying it's really important that I shared my story so you knew that there was no more ambivalence about what actually played out and that two women can actually work together and be great leaders and support each other and and become and make a country become great she says it was i'm so proud of that lifetime she says and i'm so sad that it hasn't been yet recognized that i was a double agent and that i played my role so well that i had even my husband and my child fooled she's sad about that she says it was a great lesson in sacrifice just like the queen sacrificed everything. The things she had to do, I can't mention. And you can only imagine by watching spy movies at what we had to do. And she says there's a movie with um, Kate Blanchett that hints at how rough it was. It just shows like the surface, but it was rougher than that. The things we had to do, she says. But we're happy. And we're happy that things are continuing the way they should be, she says. <sighs> she feels so much better now. She says, um, I wanted to share that. It was heavy on my heart. She says, bless you and happy new year and Merry Christmas. She says, I'll be back. But I wanted to share this as a standalone thing so you could investigate yourself Oof, that was intense <laughs> okay so next episode we'll see what happens